Hey there, Johnny Vandefort here, Lorraine County Community College MEMS and Microelectronics Manufacturing Program, as well as Merit Manufacturing Electronics and Rework Institute for training. We just got done training a couple of folks with a company that's nearby us in how to do BGA rework using our Nancorp BGA rework tools. Uh, we were able to train these folks up in how to do placement of the BGA, what a BJ, BGA is, the ball grid array chip components, um, how to not only rework it, but also how to inspect the type of reworks on our creative electron x-ray system. But one of the most challenging things in doing BGA rework is doing the reballing if needed. Like manufacturers don't always seem to be able to do this. And when they do, it's kind of those like, eh, we really don't do this here. Repair people, on the other hand, like the company that we just had in here, yeah, they do BGA rework from time to time because that's what they're paid to do. It's a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, when you're doing repair BGA rework, you have to sometimes be able to do a process called reballing. And reballing is, make sure I got everything all into focus there. Reballing is the process by which you take a BGA chip, like kind of like the one that I've got in my hand right here that I've just pulled off of a board, and we remove all the excess solder from the chip and put new solder balls onto the chip. Um, and I'd like to demonstrate for you a little bit of the process of what it is that, you know, how difficult this process actually um, happens to be. So I'm going to have the microscope here display the BGA chip that's being worked on uh, right here down in the lower or lower corner of the screen. Now, to be fair, there are, to be fair, number one, I am not an expert in doing um, BGA rework. I am a trainer. I'd say I'm pretty good. I am not a repair technician that's doing this every single day. So this is sort of a like, well, I wanna train people up in what I know how to do. And at the same exact time, uh, you know, try and, practice myself to get myself to be as good as possible. Some folks, they do reballing using a little stencil for the, um, for the pads that are on there, um, and they print solder paste through them. Some folks, they take the actual chip itself, and they put it inside of a little fixture here, kind of like this, and then they take the little chip that's with it on there, and they a little frame that's on there. They put this in place and they, they pour a whole bunch of little tiny, little tiny uh, solder balls all over the place onto there. Um, that works well. There's multiple ways to be able to do this. There's, there's probably hundreds of ways to really do reballing. Um, and typically speaking, reballing uh, BGA requires the right tools, the right materials, the right equipment, all of it to be able to do it um, effectively without wasting too much time because in any BGA rework process, it's it's 10 to 15 minutes just to take the chip off it's and clean up the board and the chip so that they're ready to be reballed. It's easily 25, 30 plus minutes to be able to do, uh, well, maybe not 25, maybe more like 15 to 25, if you're good, somewhere around like 15, 25 to do the actual reballing process. Uh, and then another 10 minutes to be able to push that chip and re-solder it back down to the board. And then you got to test it afterwards. You're talking like 40 minutes to an hour easily to fix something like this. And reballing is easily one of the more tedious parts of the process with it. So let me show you a little bit about what I, what I mean by that. So I'm going to zoom in to my chip here, All right? Kind of put, I've got, I'm not going to do the entire thing. I've got an array of 25 by, or I'm sorry, five by five. So 25 by, or 25 uh, balls that are on there. I'm going to use some of our Amtec fluxing agent to put this down. And I want to remove, I don't know what kind of solder is on there. It's probably lead free solder. Uh, if I had to guess something with it, like a SAC 305 type solder, something like that. But using it in my one hand here, using a solder spatula that I've got here um, and a little piece of solder wick is what that is i'm going to place the solder wick 
um, down onto my board and applying about the same amount of pressure that I would write with a mechanical pencil, I'm going to basically scrub the surface of the interposer of the BGA, removing all the solder from um, that particular area. And I'll be kind of tipping my head back every once in a while with there. Also use proper fume extraction when using flux. I actually don't have any of it on there. Shame on me, absolutely shame on me for doing so. Um, with that, I should have something like that on there. Um, my wick now has uh, some solder materials that have been absorbed up into it, but I want to make sure that I've got it all. I want to make sure that my interposer has no material, no solder onto any of the interposer pads that is going to go and get put onto, onto the board. So I'm actually going to go a second time over all the interposer pads until I've got all the solder out of those pads. All right, that looks pretty good how I've got it right here. Take the wick, put it away, put my soldering. My soldering iron was set to about 660 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. Um, so now I've actually, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and a small wipe, kind of clean it up a little bit there. It's kind of warm still. Normally you want to wait a little bit of time. IPA is flammable when it comes to uh, that kind of stuff. So you want to be kind of careful with that, right? Normally you also, you want to make sure your ESD is plugged in. I'm doing this at more of the demonstration table. So I actually don't, all of our technical tables, they all have stuff with them. Yeah, you don't want to static shock the chip off, right? That would be a bad idea. Sorry, right, so now my interposer is looking pretty good at this point, the underside of the chip. The, bottom part of the chip that's going to be put down. Now, one of the next tricks to do is to take some fluxing agent. Normally, flux is your friend. You wanna use a lot of it. Not in this process. Don't use a lot of it. You need very little fluxing agent. You use too much and you're gonna be in an awful lot of trouble with this. Normally I have like a little card or something like that. Um, Like a little, like a, like a, hotel card. I'm just going to spread this around with my finger here. That's going to give just enough to fill in the interposer parts and not leave a tremendous amount um, extra along. Uh, next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to apply some solder balls. Um, this chip, I believe, takes 0.55 millimeter solder balls to there. And so let me put some of the solder balls onto the board here. You see some of them are sticking down to different places. Probably haven't applied enough, but so we'll put down a couple of more. There we go, that's definitely gonna be enough. Um, now the fun process. I don't have a stencil that, well, I do actually have a stencil, but I'm kind of doing just the central parts of this here. Normally, if you have a stencil, you load the chip into a stencil and sort of um, align the interposer up to the stencil and drop all of the like drop a truckload of balls into the little stencil frame then you play <laughs> you shake it all up at that point you uh sing a little song inside your head that you shake everything all up with and then um you shake all the balls so that one ball falls into each open area um of the stencil right and then after it falls um into the stencil then you lift the stencil up you pray to whichever religion you believe in or, you know, knock on wood, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, and ultimately, um, make sure, or, and then check, uh, so you lift up the stencil and then you check to make sure that there is a ball inside of each port because this is a BGA chip. This isn't some little chip resistor where a portion of it, if a portion of it's not connected, it'll still kind of be functional. Even then, it's not always true. No, this chip, if one of these connectors isn't connected, this chip's not going to work. The graphics processor's not going to work. The Wi-Fi unit, the, B, the, uh, the Bluetooth unit, none of it's actually going to really work with there. And then you've got what us engineers call a problem at that point, you know, where you've got something that ultimately doesn't really work. So what I've done here, and what you can hopefully see on camera here, is I have placed one ball 
I have placed one ball in each of the little sections of the central part. This chip actually has 385 um, ball connections. Um, and I'm just placing them in each one of them here. The stencil would normally do this kind of for me with it. Now, next, you want to heat it up. You put it on a hot plate, put heat from the bottom of it, or very gently run air on the top of it. Using the quick 861DW hot air rework station that we've got, I've got the largest nozzle, an airflow of 11 out of 120, and a temperature of 650 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I'm going to do right now is gently blow. I'm about three inches away from the chip, which I'm hoping you're getting a little bit of a view of with it here, right? While watching the balls, I got to keep my eyes on the balls. I want to make sure they don't move. They don't move too close together. And if I do come in with the tweezers and intervene, you know, split the two of them apart. And now I'm about maybe, oh, about a centimeter away, right? Might even be able to see it on the screen as of right now. I'm just double checking to make sure you can see it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm about a centimeter away from the BGA chip. And at this point here, I'm getting even a little bit closer with it, and I'm waving it around gently. What will happen? Oh, see, one of them tried to move. No, nope, don't you get out of here. Go back to your little spot, right? Heating it up from the top in many ways. This is kind of unorthodox. Oh, so there are the fluxing agents starting to activate with some of them. It's starting to get warm enough. I've got to get the interposer warm enough to where these balls will reflow. See that? You see that on there? Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, that is pretty. That is pretty. Now I can be a little bit more wily with the airflow. I'm gonna increase my airflow up just a little bit, up to 37, you know, just kind of on the fly with this here. And I'm just checking to make sure that they've all kind of flown over with that. There you go. Just like that, all the balls on the chip, nice and reflowed over with that there. Looks like it's the looks like that process. Oh, I may have been a little bit out of focus. Sorry about that. There we go. All the balls reflowed over uh, on the board there or on the chip with it. Now I give this chip a little bit of some time, and this chip is ready at this point to be uh, put on back onto the rework station there. Right. Take the chip off of here. You can see at this point, just really the center area with it there. Can you even see that there? Maybe. I don't know. See, yeah, hopefully you can. I'll try to get a clear image of what that looks like um, in the uh, in the spots with that there. But yeah, that's the reballing process. Multiple ways to uh, be able to do it. This is just one way that we actually trained in how to do it. Did that take a lot of materials? It took a little bit of some materials. It just takes a little bit more time. You're doing sort of BGA rework repair. You want to be careful with what it is that you're doing. But ultimately, there are other ways to be able to do this. This is just kind of one of them right here um and something that can be done successfully from a uh, repair standpoint so very good more to come from lorraine county community colleges mems and microelectronics manufacturing program as well as merit manufacturing electronics and rework institute for training leave a comment down in the comment below if you like this thing like comment and subscribe i don't know what other youtube people do yada yada and we'll see you around on the next one with it folks see you later Bye bye